Let's look at 10 different typography layouts you can try out in your next poster design. So the first thing about text and developing these different layouts and styles is you gotta have the right fonts. I like to use Adobe fonts. That's kind of my primary resource of fonts, which you should have access to if you have an Adobe subscription. You can also look at defont.com. They've got a lot on there for both personal use and commercial use. So the first layout we're gonna look at is just big statement text in the middle of the design. And usually this is most effective when you use kind of an interesting font because it's gonna take up so much of the canvas. So let's make a new layer, hit T for our type tool. Let's click once and type out Kerr. This is Jordan Kerr of the Salt Lake Shred. And this is an interesting font I got called Tostada. I believe this was from Adobe Fonts. So just blowing it up real big. You can also choose something a little bit more like narrow, compact, and bold to fill this space. So if you wanted like a taller font, we can look at something like Dharma Gothic. Could be interesting, Dharma Gothic bold. Blow that up real big. And then as far as the first name goes or any like team name or additional text, I think just something small out of the way, maybe on top here, we can duplicate this layer with Command J, bring it up and then type out Jordan, his first name, and just bring this font way down in size. Something like that. We could space it out too if you bring up your character panel, which you can get from this icon or this A on your side panel here. You can play with the character spacing using the tracking dial here, just clicking and dragging left or right. I kind of like the, the more funky font look. Manbo is another option we can go with, Manbo lines. It's kind of a cool modern looking font with a lot of interesting line work. It's basically like the bigger the text is, the more interesting or captivating you want that font to be. But it could work with like a more normal looking font as well. Like even Times New Roman can look good or Times Regular can go to uh, Baskerville too. Baskerville is a fun one. And it's really hard to go wrong with just big statement text right off the bat. Next one we're gonna look at, if you wanna incorporate the player number, you can create this layout. Let me just put these in a folder, call it statement, new folder, new text layer. Let's type out the number first, 66, and command T to transform this up. Bring this spacing back to zero. And this is again, Dharma Gothic, which I think works for this example. I'm gonna duplicate this number layer, and then we're gonna lay out Jordan, and then hit enter and hit cur. And then once you have your first and last name text, you can hit command T and shrink it down to fit the exact height of this number. This almost takes on just a shape, like a rectangle. And so you can use this in a variety of ways if you're just matching up the exact height here. And we can take this, maybe you move this into a corner, Maybe you change the color of the 66. We've got the, the shred color palette here. Maybe you want the 66 to be like a stroked version. You can go down to your effects, add a stroke, and just make a simple black inside stroke. Two pixels is fine, and then reduce the fill. Now you have some contrast. I think contrast is, is key to a lot of these layout designs, especially when you have both the first and last name, or if you're adding in the number, just having more contrast to separate the elements and kind of emphasize different things. Gonna rename this folder number name. Let's make a new folder and again, make a new layer. This time we're gonna do kind of a full spectrum of descriptions in addition to the player name. So if you have multiple word groupings, one way to lay those out is by typing out the first name, Jordan Kerr, or let's start with the team name, Salt Lake Shred, and then dividing up these different word groupings with some kind of character or element or something. So we're gonna use slashes. I'm just gonna hit space once, hit a slash, and then space again. Same thing with after name, space, slash, space. We'll type out number 66. Maybe we want like a more normal looking font. So let's go back to our character panel. Let's, let's do Euro style. I've always liked Euro style. Euro style extended black. This font is available in Adobe Fonts. And just free transforming this down. You can even add an additional space between these slashes on either side. And you can play with the spacing of the words as well. Bringing up this tracking number, again, shrinking it down. But this is like a very clean, kind of minimalist style. You can just position towards the top of your canvas. Another similar look you can go with, so let's call this group slashes, make a new one. I'm just gonna take 
this text duplicate it just by holding option you can click and drag any layer bring it up and duplicate it start with salt lake shred this one we're going to position left justified and if you pull up your grids using command apostrophe we can zoom in and position this exactly two boxes from the top two boxes from the left let's command j duplicate it bring that one to the middle we can middle justify this and then we'll type out Jordan Kerr, and going back to our move tool, command A to select the whole screen, and then center aligning it. And again, command J, duplicating this layer, bringing it over to the right, and right justifying this one. Again, bringing it over so it lines up with the margin we've set on the top and left. And this one will type out number 66. And now when we play with any of these font sizes or play with the font itself, just by selecting all of these layers, we can shrink it down. It'll maintain the same spacing that we've said, the same justification, and you can change the font to maybe we look back at times regular, for example. Another very clean, minimalist look. Next example we'll look at, again, new layer in a new group. Let's start by typing out a big cur, and this one, let's go back to Euro style extended black, and we'll reset the tracking to zero, command T to blow this up. We can even go less than zero just to bring the letters closer together. And then similar to our first example where we just have big statement text, this one's gonna be a little more specific in how you tie in the first name. So let's make a new layer, or let's duplicate this cur layer just for ease. Move it up, type out Jordan, and then I'm gonna shrink this way down. Now let's make a new layer between cur and Jordan and go to our rectangle tool. You can use U for the shortcut there. Just drag out a rectangle box and we're gonna create this like highlighted first name look. So I'm using this Salt Lake yellow just because it's kind of a natural highlighter color. And then we can just position this kind of right in the middle or even even along the left side is okay, kind of off center. But basically you just want to fit it kind of where it makes sense, given the last name. You still want the last name to be readable, which I think this still is because you have a little bit of that E peeking out. So this placement looks pretty clean to me. And we can shrink the, the whole grouping here if we wanted it a little less intrusive or if we just wanted it as like a title at the top of the canvas. The next example we'll use, let's duplicate out this cur layer clicking and dragging while holding option. For this one, let's type out Jordan next to Kerr. And we're gonna create some contrast by switching this Jordan font to, I think regular should be good. And we can put this spacing back to zero between letters, hit our checkbox, and then free transform this down. This is another really simple way to use a highlight concept. or just creating some contrast between the first and last name. Let's make a new layer under our text, bring in our rectangle tool again, and draw out a rectangle box around the last name. And then we probably want an extra space between the first and last name, just because this box makes it a little bit too close together. So let's move that box over just with our move tool. So just another way you can keep that last name emphasized while still including the full player name. Our next example, we're gonna go back to that big text from our first name highlights. Let's click and drag holding option, that cur layer again. This one I'm gonna type out cur's number 66. And this one we're gonna have his name kind of cutting through the number in the middle. So let's go back to our character panel and reduce this spacing to yeah, negative 100. Let's duplicate this text layer, command J. I'm gonna type out Jordan Kerr. I'm gonna get really good at typing his name. Free transform it down. Let's fix our spacing too. And then font size, we can probably go down to like, I don't know, 40 maybe. So let's start by making a new layer. And again, we're gonna take our rectangle tool, just map out like how we want this number to be split. Maybe we can just make it in white. And then I'm gonna take the, the Jordan Kerr full name, center it on this box and on the canvas. And I just wanna position this box so we can still read the number. Like if I put it exactly in the middle or more towards the middle, you'd be left with this. So if we cut out this box from this number, it wouldn't be so obvious that it's number 66. So I'm gonna move it to keep it around here. And we can even shrink it down a little bit more, both the box and the name, so maybe like that, keep the box spread out so it covers the full number. And then if you hold command and click on this rectangle, you can now hide the rectangle, select our layer, our 66 layer, and then click the mask icon while holding option. That's gonna create a black 
mask, basically where we had that selection in place, which is removing or erasing part of the number. So now we're just left with this slot for Kerr's full name. And we can fill the space a little bit better just by spreading out the name as well. Center it on our canvas. And this is another style you can play with that involves both the number and the player name. Next example we'll look at is playing with a signature font to do the first name. So let's take our last name again from this first name highlight, Kerr, blown up pretty big. And then making a new layer on top, let's type out Jordan. And for this font, I'm gonna use, I think Allison script is a good one. Pretty sure I got this from Defont. We're gonna structure this so it goes just over this last name. Then we're gonna change the color of only the first name, so we'll use the Salt Lake blue. And this is kind of a fun contrasting style. You get the first name kind of scribbled over a bold and big last name. For this signature font, you're gonna find like a variety of weights when you're looking for signature fonts and cursive fonts like this. If you ever wanna make it a little bit bolder, you can do Command J and just move it one arrow key to the right, one arrow key down, just to give it a little bit more weight. And you can do that again, you can do it repeatedly. Again, Command J, right and down. I'm just gonna position it so it's like sitting on top of the letters. Next up, we're gonna do this vertical horizontal look. So I'm duplicating that cur layer. Let's folder these previous ones, call it signature. This one, I'm gonna duplicate this cur layer, move it over, again, type out Jordan. We'll keep it all caps. And this time we're gonna shrink it down and then rotate it vertically. And this works especially well if you have a first letter of the last name that has like a, a nice thick edge to it. And we can change the font so it's a little bit less wide. This one I'll do Euro style condensed heavy. And honestly, we could do the same thing with Kerr. Euro style condensed heavy. And we'll take our Jordan. And similar to when we, we fit the number and the first and last name to be the exact same height, do that same idea here and just creates a nice a nice rectangle shape you can play with and if you want some more contrast here you could go to slightly less heavy font size you can change the spacing back to zero and bring this back down match and with all these you know i'm just using a, a black color scheme grayscale but of course you can feel free to change the colors as you like we'll center this one and our last example we're going to look at is just some simple paragraph text we'll make a new layer t for our type tool let's just drag out a nice text box which should automatically populate with some placeholder text which we're going to run with for this example for paragraph text i found like very clean simple fonts are often better so something like helvetica even we can use helvetica regular and then bring this font size a good bit down. And you just wanna like feel out the spacing. But then the real kicker with paragraph text is using this far right justification to basically fill the entire width of our box. So you'll see it's like justified on the right, justified on the left, and it's just playing with the spacing between. And you can be strategic about this. Like if you had the last five words being something like really impactful, you can even bold them or just the idea of them being kind of on their own line can help give weight to that particular text. And I'm leaving in this previous example just because I think it's helpful to have some simple title when you have paragraph text like this. We can even move this one over to the right, because I'm realizing it's kind of the same height as all of this. So this is another layout you can play with as well. Hopefully this was helpful in giving you some ideas for your next poster design. Text is truly something that creates endless possibilities for us, different fonts, playing with different sizes, creating contrast, all that stuff. There's like no real right or wrong way to do it. It's just kind of what looks balanced and clean in your opinion. So play with some of these ideas, make them your own, and I'm excited to see what you come up with. As always, let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.